on the globe in the space too. It means you are sitting on the earth, in the space. And surrounding your body there is nothing but divine energy that is flooding in the form of oxygen. And same energy is entering in your body through your nostrils in the form of breath, giving you life. Be aware about it. You will think you will find out that one infinite energy is the source of all life. Not only one person, but all beings are receiving life energy from one source. And that source is infinite. Veda we are reading, real form of Godhead, Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma, truth, knowledge and infinity, in the form of Divine Lord. So you are receiving your break from infinity, so pay your attention. Any person, take children and one side. Okay. And visualize you are receiving energy from infinite source. It means this is the philosophy or essence of Vedic philosophy unity in diversity. So you can realize unity in diversity just now. How all beings are getting life from one source, or that very source is, is infinite. That infinity is the cause of all diversities, whatever we are seeing, invisible or perceptible form. Be aware about it. So meditate on your breath. Try to take deep breath, long breath, and chant your mantra with breath. This is a very great process. Chant your mantra with breath and listen that sound mentally with inhaling and exhaling. You will be able to collect your thought and control your mind too. Do it some minutes and meditate on breath. Where breath is entering in your nostrils, that point, try to look mentally on that point and feel that breath is entering and Chant your mantra mentally and try to create harmony among sound, mind and breath. If you will watch your breath, your mind will be stable. If you will listen that sound, your mind will be stable too.
try to take deep breath long breath then your body will be healthful this breathing process will help you lot Okay now try to create holy sound pranava with me three times your three body causal subtle and gross and try to elevate your consciousness from these three and try to establish it into source of life that is called supreme consciousness and be one with that this is the purpose of meditation and prayer and religion and dharma all these holy things are related only with this purpose okay now ओम कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय हरे परमात्मने क्लेशनाशाय गोविंदाय नमो नमः ओम यो श्री रामचंद्र स भगवान अद्वैत परमानंदात्मा यब्रह्म May God bless you all. May He lead you all from darkness to light, from unreal to real, from dead to immortality. May He shower upon you all His divine grace. May He bestow upon you all His divine love and peace. as i was indicating that purpose of life is to achieve unity in diversity and see unity in diversity and one can be able only through meditation there is only one way this devotion knowledge hatha yoga and other all methods are means for meditation only when you are concentrating on one point when you are meditating on one point with law with awareness with deep faith and respect then you are achieving 
peace and inner satisfaction too. So meditation is the one way through which one can achieve unity with Godhead. And without achieving that unity, nobody can be able to achieve pure wisdom. And without pure wisdom, your mind can't be pure, can't be stable. And without pure mind, stable mind, you can't be able to realize peace. And where there is no peace, there is no happiness. Lord stated second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Nasti buddhi ayuktasya, na cha ayuktasya bhavana, na cha bhavyata shanti shantasya kuta sukham. Where there is no peace, how there will be happiness. So happiness is the result of peace. And that peace is the result of bhavana. Bhavana means divine devotion, divine love. And that divine law will come in your life when you will achieve pure wisdom. Because Jane Binunahoi Paratiti, that great Saint Tulsida has told that without knowledge, your faith can't be stable. And that knowledge will come in your life only when you will achieve pure wisdom. And how one can achieve that pure wisdom, Lord stated here, nasti buddhi ayuktasya. He who is not united with Godhead, has not subdued his senses, his mind, he can't be able to achieve pure wisdom. And one can achieve union with Godhead through meditation only. There are so many other processes in our Upanishadas, but those great seers who search that, they declared only Te Dhyana Yoga Nugata Apashyan Deva Atma Shakti Swagodaira Niguda. There is a very good story in Shvetashtar Upanishada that once so many Brahma Vadin great seers get together and they were thinking about truth. And Kalas Sobhavo Niyati Radriksha Deva Atma Shakti They thought about so many things, what is the root cause of life? And what is source of life? What is the purpose of life? In the end, when they didn't decide and they turned their eyes from outside Te Dhyana Yoga Nugata Apashyan Devatma Shakti Rusagura and Guda. After that, they turn their eyes inside. They meditate on their own self. And they realize that truth, Supreme Consciousness, Supreme Brahma. I mean that as Great Seer declared, Nanya Pantha Vidyate and I, there is no other way beside this. And I will suggest to you all that there is no other way beside this. You must try to meditate some minutes daily. Try to practice this divine process. As you know, nowadays, North America, state and country are both countries. Not only North America, but all European countries also are following this divine process. Thousands of American and European are practicing this divine method under my guidance too. So I am telling you people that you must try to meditate and concentrate your mind. This is the purpose of religion. Religion is not only external activities. Religion means religio. There is a word in Latin. And meaning of this word is came to beg. 
came to back means turn your eyes inside came to back to god came to back your own source your source is supreme consciousness as we are praying daily tumeva mata ch pita tumeva it means our mother is divine nature supreme energy and our father is supreme consciousness that supreme brahma appear in two four nature and spirit and that nature become our supreme mother and spirit become our supreme father and we are children of divine parent you can read it and understand it lord krishna stated in 14th chapter bhagavad gita mam yo nirmat brahma tasmin garbham dadhami ham sambhava sarbhuta naam tato bhuti bharata oh my dear arjuna this divine nature is my own power and i am sowing life seed in this divine nature and due to that all beings appear it means all beings are only projection of one supreme consciousness and that consciousness project itself through divine nature as you know that gross body mental body subtle body and causal body we have three bodies and all bodies are only projection of divine energy and that divine energy can't move without light of supreme consciousness and that light is appearing in our body in the brahma chakra that is called brahma chakra situated on the top of head and giving you life and due to that divine light this breath is coming and going in this body and you can realize this fact that source of life is one and source of consciousness is one too so there are one supreme consciousness residing in all mind stuff all brahma chakras all you know intellect and there is one supreme energy that project herself into form of all beings all forms and name and energy and consciousness both are projection of one supreme cause that is called para brahma para brahma param dhamam pavitram paramam bhuvan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam majam vibho that is supreme brahma and that very supreme brahma is not neither he nor she that is it due to this in sanskrit we are you know indicating that brahma om tat sat brahma tat means that and that is it neither he nor she he and she both are manifestation of one it due to that we are reading in veda tum istri tum kumar asi tum kumar utwa kumari oh my lord you appear in the form of women and you appear in the form of men men and women both are your own manifestation and really na istri na kumane sa na chaiva na punska yade yad shariram madatte tena tena prujyate you are neither men nor you know women you are only supreme cause and what kind of form you are accepting you appear into that form it means there is one supreme cause and that appear into form of energy and spirit and that appear into so many name and form men and women male or female all are projection of one supreme cause so everybody can meditate on that supreme cause you know some days before i got a newspaper and a great discussion is going on in christianity about women women has right to achieve heaven or not just now. okay and i heard that pope gave some you know verdict and there is great confusion in that society and you are living that society that country where they are thinking upon it that 
women can achieve that salvation or not. Because till now, according to Bible, women can't achieve salvation. Because in 8th century, this thought was under consideration of Pope that women has soul or not. But they decided, no, woman has soul. But woman has no right to achieve salvation. Why? Because woman is not pious, according to their, you know, philosophy. Woman was created by Godhead only for enjoy, enjoyment of men, nothing else. Because when Adam was, you know, puzzled and frustrated in that garden, and God came and he saw that person is frustrated now. And he asked, why are you sitting in this, you know, gloomy face? And he told, what I can do, I am alone. Then, okay. And God took a rib, left rib of that, you know, man, and make a woman. Okay, play with her. So woman was created only for, you know, mankind and only for playing. Okay, has no same right. But in Vedic philosophy, we are reading that one supreme cause appear into form of big egg. Big egg, we are reading in Manusmriti, we are reading in Veda too. One supreme cause appear into form of big egg. And that egg was split in two parts and half become men and half become women. Okay? And that big egg, today also we are worshipping in the form of Shivalingam. The Shivalingam. And we believe that this is a Ardhanari Shwara. Ardhanari Shwara means half woman and half man God. And nowadays scientists are searching this fact. They are seeing that each egg has two parts, male and female in itself, and is splitting and creating this universe. It means this Vedic philosophy is totally scientific philosophy only. You will never find other philosophy in the world like this. And luckily you all are followers of Vedic philosophy. Okay? And you are you all are followers of same Sanatan Dharma. And in this philosophy, in this dharma, religion is the only way through which one can achieve highest good. And highest good is the purpose of life. Neither wealth, nor health, nor family. Artha dharma kama moksha. And among those moksha, moksha means perfection of life, is the highest good. We are striving day and night only for achieving that highest good. This is the purpose of religion. And you can achieve that good through your practice. At practice means try to concentrate on one point, try to meditate and try to realize unity in diversity. How one can think that his practice is going in the good way or he is achieving something? Only our great seer told that when you will realize unity in diversity, yasmin sarvani bhutani atma ev abhut vijanata tatrako moha kasho ka ekattva manupashyata. We are reading in Yajur Veda that when a person realizes that one soul appears into all, you know, name and form, when one realizes unity in diversity, at that time he becomes free from grief and sorrows and becomes one with God. So you can achieve unity with Godhead only through meditation and you can realize that fact through meditation. There is no other way. This is the aim of religion. And other activities, other activities are only for collecting our thought from outside. As we are coming in this temple and we are seeing Lord here. It means we must try to collect our thought from other side and concentrate on one point and see Lord our visible eyes, you know, and feel Lord presence here, because without seeing this, you know, idol, we can't feel that God is here. You can see only there is war and some other thing. But when we are seeing a picture of God, an idol of God, then automatically you will feel God is here. Okay? When you will feel that presence of Godhead, automatically your mind will be pious. You will think good way. And 
When your mind will be pious, then you will sit and meditate, then you will achieve tranquility. You will achieve serenity in your own self. And one day will come in your life when you will realize unity in diversity too. This is the great ideology of Veda. And nowadays people are searching eternal peace, not outside but inside. And there is only one way to achieve that peace through meditation. Be aware about it. Your all activities, religious activities are only to collect your thought from outside and try to direct on one direction. And that direction must be divine. And we are worshiping in so many forms of Godhead only. Why? Because we have different state of mind. And you know, every person can think, can speculate, can imagine it, only according to his own state of mind. And I don't think that time will come in human history when all human beings, you know, will achieve the same state of mind. That is impossible. Due to that, in Sanatan Dharma, there is a provision. And each person can select his own ideal. Idol means ideal, nothing else. When we are talking about idol, idol means ideal. Okay? Ideal means like whom you want to you want to be. That is your ideal. So that is ideal. And you are free. You can select your ideal. Due to this, either you can concentrate on Lord Rama, either you concentrate on Lord Krishna, or you concentrate on Lord Shiva. And all these name and form are only And your meditation, only for your meditation. You can collect your thought and pay our attention and think about that form and that quality. When we think about that quality, automatically that quality will come in your own life. Yeah, you will be like that. This is a very good, you know, philosophy that's called Kit Bhringa Nyaya. Kit Bhringa Nyaya, there is a special kind of you know, insect, or that a spider always try to catch that and put in, you know, one place and cover with that clay and create a sound, a special sound beside that insect. And after some months, that, that insect, you know, change its own form and appear in the form of that spider. It means if that insect can change its own form due to hearing that sound, you can change your own life too, if you think always about God. Jake antar atho yama ramai rama hoi, ramai rama sumirat, sumirat apui rama hoi. If you chant always, Ram, 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 uh, any name of Godhead, automatically one day will come in your life when your whole life will change into form of that God. You can change your this human life into divine life, there is no doubt. Only Dharma teaches this divine process through which one can change himself from humanity into divinity. So my dear, try to meditate daily and pay some minutes because you are losing your breath in every moment. And that breath is very, very precious, very costly. I don't think that you can achieve this breath paying lot of money. According to our philosophy, in 24 hours we are spending 21,600 vred. Be aware. 21,600 vred we are spending in within 24 hours. It means 
It means in one hour, we are spending 900.